Hey everyone, before we start the show, I just want to get some plugs out of the way. If you enjoy this podcast and you're into wrestling, check out the Nerds and Marks podcast or Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling. If you're not getting your fill on movie and entertainment discussion, then check out the Entertainment Buffet podcast. If you want to dive into the world of video games, I highly recommend the Dark Cast by my friends over at DarkStation.com. Listen to them cover important topics and interview men and women from all over the industry. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's shelved mini episode. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. Now, we have a couple things to talk about on today's mini episode, including a review for a movie I finally got around to seeing this weekend. But the first thing we're going to talk about is the script that we will be discussing on Friday. And it's one I've been pretty excited to read and talk about. It's one of the early, early scripts I ever found, and that is Alien vs. Predator The Hunt. Now, I did a vote on my Twitter recently uh, asking for what scripts people would like to see. Uh, This was one that was in the voting run, although it was the one that placed second, but very close behind Batman vs. Superman. Uh, We are doing Batman vs. Superman. It's going to be one of the ones coming up within the next three weeks here, but uh, I did need a script in the meantime, and since this one was another one that got uh, almost just as many votes, I figured it's a good one to throw in the mix and it's you know I feel like it fits in the fan base and I, it's one I'm really excited to talk about I am a huge fan of the Alien and the Predator franchise I even enjoy that first movie it's not amazing but hey it's the movie we got and the second one was complete garbage and I I find some enjoyment in the first one mostly in the unrated version so you can get a little more blood cuz let's face it if that movie had been rated R in my opinion it would have been a great Alien versus Predator movie. It just needed a little more violence. Um, my biggest issue with that movie was uh, you get one alien that kills two Predators right away. There's only three in the movie, and then it's just one Predator left, and he gets a face hugger right, uh, right away in the beginning. And you're just like, oh, great. Well, now you know all three are doomed, and it kind of takes away a little bit of the suspense throughout the movie. Um, but it did leave a great setup for the sequel that they totally fucked up. <laughs> um but yeah, so we're going to be talking about Alien vs. Predator The Hunt. This is a script from 1991, and I believe the writer is Peter Briggs, and he actually tried to sue Paul W.S. Anderson, saying that he stole the idea for his script. But if you read the script, it is a straight-up adaptation of the original Alien vs. Predator comic, um, which is a great comic, and obviously where the property really took off was in the comics and things like that. And I... There's definitely elements in the movie we got that are similar to that comic, so I can see where he might have thought he had a lawsuit, but I mean, if you're just taking elements from the comic versus somebody who based a script off the comic, it's not really stealing. You're just kind of both paying homage to the same material, or I guess Paul W.S. Anderson was paying homage while the other guy was adapting, but... Anyway, that's the script we're going to be talking about, Alien vs. Predator The Hunt. It's pretty easy to find online, but as always, you can find it on our Tumblr, shelledfilmpodcast.tumblr.com. Okay, so I have I have a movie to review, and this is actually going to lead into another top 10 list for this week. Um, so I finally saw uh, Doctor Strange, and I, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the comic book movies, which I think is pretty obvious from the show. Uh, I love the Marvel movies. I hate the DC movies, but not because I'm a Marvel fanboy. But uh, I'm, I'm going to be... I keep mentioning it. We're going to be covering the DC movies. I know nobody's out there waiting for it, but it's something I, I actually enjoy talking about, even though I don't really like the movies. I definitely think there's some criticism to discuss, and I have fun looking at criticism. So we are going to look at those. But today I'm going to talk about Doctor Strange, which I, I bought on Blu-ray when it came out and just haven't had the time to watch it. I missed it while it was in theaters. I really wanted to see it. The trailers definitely had me interested. Um, I've only read one Doctor Strange book ever, and that's one that's often recommended, which is called The Oath. And I would, I would highly recommend it. I really enjoyed reading it. It definitely gave me a little bit of an insight to the character um, going into the movie. And it's just a, it's a really good book. Um, the movie, on the other hand, was, 
I, I fucking loved it. <laughs> like, I loved it way more than I thought I would. Um, I definitely feel fatigue when it comes to all these Marvel movies. And then once another one comes out, I just get so wrapped up in it. Um, and that this is going to lead into our top 10 list. Um, I'm going to do my top 10 Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. So these are only the movies in the Marvel Universe. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, I, I want to talk about Doctor Strange. Um, I thought it was very good. It's, you know, it's another origin story, which, you know, everybody complains about origin stories. But you you kind of have to when you're introducing characters into the universe. And this was a really good one. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch, for one, is Robert Downey Jr. levels of amazing at playing his character. Like, born to play the character. I thought he was fantastic. I, I mean, I've always been a big fan of Cumberbatch. I love everything he does. I loved him in that Star Trek movie, even though that's kind of an unpopular opinion. But um, he was great, like way better than I ever expected he would be, which is crazy because I already knew he was a great actor. But he was just so entertaining in the role. He's very funny, which I wasn't expecting. Um, and he just he fits the character so well. So I really enjoyed him in the role. Um, Mads Mikkelsen, it was great to see him as a villain. He doesn't get to do much, which is kind of in the tradition of Marvel villains. And uh, Tilda Swinton as the ancient one was really great. I'm not a big Tilda Swinton fan, but uh, I thought she was really good in the movie, really well cast, and sh again, she was funny as well. Um, but I think a big thing to talk about with the movie is the special effects, and I know a lot of people just kind of compared it to Inception when it came out, and there's definitely inspiration from Inception, but this is on a whole nother level. This is like Inception dialed up to 12 and it's so great. Like, it's amazing. And I can't believe it didn't win the Oscar for special effects because I have never seen anything like it. Just um, their interpretation of magic in the Marvel Universe. It looks awesome. And the city bending stuff is so great and so complicated. The fact that anybody was able to sit at a... I mean, obviously, hundreds of people were able to sit at computers and make that come to life is almost unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. Inception is the closest thing, but even Inception, it was just like, hey, they folded a city over like once, and this is just something on a whole nother level. I I really love the movie. I thought the story was really well. The, the magic stuff was really cool. All of the characters were a lot of fun, which I mean, in a lot of Marvel movies, you get some characters that you can just kind of shrug off, but I thought everybody was really great and just dialed in. And I, I love the ending so much. And if you haven't seen the movie, I'm going to talk a little spoilers here for like a minute. So just fast forward a little bit. Um, but the ending where he goes into the dark dimension and faces Dormammu and the time loop thing was fucking amazing. The idea that he takes down this incredible villain with annoyance and you're just seeing him get killed over and over again. And the essentially the dramatic ending is played for comedy. And I thought it was fucking brilliant and so well done i was not expecting that i the ending really sealed the deal for me i was really loving it to begin with but the ending is just such a great way to deal with the villain and i i loved it um just the point where like he finally realizes he's in a time loop just like what what's going on like what are you doing take this away uh to see a like basically a god just falling victim to this one newly appointed sorcerer is so funny it's just it was so well done i love dr strange it goes high up on my list for me which is going to lead us into my list of my top 10 marvel cinematic universe movies now again this is just the movies that are in the cinematic universe so there's no spider-man movie in here although spider-man 2 will be my favorite comic book movie and i am going to do a top 10 comic book movie list at some point but uh for now we're just going to look at my Marvels, and I'm going to start at the bottom with my number 10, and that is going to be Ant-Man. Now, Ant-Man, I really like Ant-Man, and I, I love all of the Marvel movies, even the ones that people say are bad, I still enjoy. Um, and Ant-Man was one, after Avengers Age of Ultron, I was definitely feeling burnt out a little bit, like, oh man, that movie was a whole lot of experience for the eyes and I really need a break and Ant-Man came out shortly afterwards and I didn't see it when it came out um, I saw it way later we have like a dollar theater near me that plays movies that are in later in run or about to come out on blu-ray and I saw Ant-Man there so I saw it a little later 
and it, it felt like such a breath of fresh air because it wasn't like the fate of the entire world is at stake it was a very personal story it was very funny and I really enjoyed all the actors in it. Like, Paul Rudd is perfect as Scott Lang. And I really enjoyed... Oh, fuck. What is his name? As uh, Hank Pym. Michael Douglas. <laughs> Michael Douglas as Hank Pym. I thought he was really great. Um, yeah, every, everyone was great. The movie was really fun. Really funny. I know everybody complained. Like, oh, imagine if it was an Edgar Wright movie. But, like, whatever, man. It was still really enjoyable. And... From what I hear, it's not that different from what Edgar Wright would have done as far as, uh, like, the script-wise, anyway. Obviously, the direction would have been different, but um, I assume he wanted to bring his directorial flair to it, and they didn't want that because they want it to look just like the other movies, and that's kind of a bummer. That's something I think they should embrace a little more, and the DC movies are just as guilty as this. All the DC movies look like a Zack Snyder movie. Um but Ant-Man was really fun, really enjoyable, and it felt like a breath of fresh air after the crazy CG fest that was Age of Ultron. Uh, my number nine is Captain America, the first Avenger. And again, this movie felt different. It felt like a historical war movie. Um, it's a little long, and it's definitely got its two halves. Like, my favorite part of the movie comes at the end of the first half when uh, Captain America kind of goes on his first rogue mission and rescues Bucky and all the other people uh, and he meets the Red Skull for the first time that part is so great and I love it he's not in the costume he's got that shield and he's just going in there and wrecking shop and making it work and it's a really great action scene uh, with a great ending and then the second half of the movie just kind of turns into a montage and it's, it's a cool action montage but it just it feels like the movie has two distinct halves and it, it feels a little weaker in the second half but I, I really like I enjoyed Captain America way more than I thought I would I went and saw it with a bunch of friends and when I walked out of the theater with a lot of them a lot of them thought it was boring and I was one of the ones like no I thought it was like really great you know because again it was different from the other movies we had seen up until that point uh, so my number eight is the first Avengers movie um, yeah, I, I love Avengers. Uh, I thought it was really fun. If you know, It's what we've been building up to, and Loki is definitely the best villain that the series has had. And it, for me, it's, it's, like, it's like a 4 out of 5. Like It's great to see them all there. Um, there's some good action scenes. The end is amazing. And just the dialogue and the banter. Like Joss Whedon nailed it. But you know, there's a little parts of the movie that lull. It does take a while to get going. And that's why my number seven is Age of Ultron. Because I, I love both the Avengers movies, but Age of Ultron, to me, it's a little better. It's like, it's at the point where we finally feel like this is a connected universe to me. And um, that's something we're going to talk about again a little later. But uh, Age of Ultron, you know, I had more action. I love Ultron. I love James Spader doing the voice. Um, there's some really great moments. Again, not a perfect movie. Both of the Avengers movies have major flaws, and Ultron possibly has more. But if you ask me which one do I want to watch, I would pick Age of Ultron in a heartbeat, just because, you know, there's a lot more action, there's a lot more to look at, and I just, I really like some of the characters in that one, like adding uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, who, Scarlet Witch has kind of become one of my favorite characters of the franchise, so. Age of Ultron is my number seven. Uh, my number six is Iron Man 3. Now, I loved Iron Man 3 when it came out. And, it, like, to me, it was one of those ones, like, after it came out, I started hearing a lot of people shitting on it. And I was like, really? I thought that movie was really fucking fun. And I understand the complaints. Like, all the armors at the end getting destroyed so easily. I get it. Um, the remote control aspect after the whole plane sequence. I get it. But that movie is just hella entertaining. I like the idea that they have a good chunk of the movie where Tony Stark's not even in a suit. And it's, it's got some of my favorite funny moments. It's got some great cameos um, from, like, some actors that I know. Not, like, Marvel cameos. Um, I love the twist with the Mandarin because, come on, like, how are you going to do the Mandarin in a serious way? I guess now you could argue that, like, hey, they introduced magic with Doctor Strange, but you know what? We hadn't gotten there yet, and maybe the Mandarin will come back in a significant way. They, I guess they did that short where they had the real Mandarin. I didn't see that yet, even though I own the Blu-ray. Um, but Iron Man 3, I really fucking enjoyed it. And I really like Guy Pierce. He's one of my favorite actors. I thought he was a really fun villain, and he had some great dialogue. Uh, 
again, some of my favorite jokes to ever come out of a Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man movie. Um, I just think it's, it's so much fun. But uh, it does not beat my number five, which is the original Iron Man, which is basically a perfect superhero movie. Um, for me, Iron Man 3 and Iron Man 1 are kind of neck and neck. I even really enjoy Iron Man 2. Like Some people hate on that, but again, I think the biggest problem with Iron Man 2 is the ending battle is too short. I think if that was a little longer, then people would have had less problems with that movie. Um, but, I, yeah, Iron Man is amazing. I saw it in theaters three times. I, I It's probably one of the Marvel movies I've seen the most. It's definitely one you can throw on at any time. And you go back and watch it now, and it does feel different, and it does... Um, like, Robert Downey Jr. hadn't found it yet. You know, he was there. Like, he was always there, but... You watch Iron Man 2 and 3 and Avengers and everything beyond, and he has so more perfectly honed that character that going back to the first one now can be a little rough. Um, uh, so my number four is Doctor Strange, which, again, I just talked about. I loved it. It's immediately really high on my list. It's so different from the other movies. And if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. Doctor Strange is fantastic. Uh, my number three is Captain America Civil War. Um, now, when I first saw Civil War, I I thought it I didn't love I really liked it. I didn't love it, and it was on further viewings that it eventually became one of my favorite Marvel movies. And it is it is the most watchable Marvel movie. It, there's so much action. It, there's just always stuff happening. The introduction of Spider Man and Black Panther is great. Although I'm not completely sold on Spider-Man. That's something I will talk about in the future. Um, but Civil War is so good. And I think the villain is highly underrated. The, the first time I saw him, I was like, oh, the villain doesn't kind of do a lot. And then the second time you watch it, you're like, oh, no, he actually fucked everybody up. And he won. Like, this is like James Bond's Skyfall where the villain won. And nobody just seems to realize it except for him. Um... And I, I thought it was great. It has some of the best action scenes of the entire franchise. Um, it's weird that the Captain America movies ended up... He's it was the character I cared about the least. It ended up being the movies I loved the most. But Civil War, it was... It's just so much fun. Like, And it's the first one where we, I feel like they've they've done it like this is this universe feels connected because in all the other movies it's like you know why isn't thor showing up to help iron man or why isn't captain america being helped out by tony stark and blah 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 and you can find vague excuses for each one but i feel like this is the path from now on you have to start putting other characters into your movies um because I, I just feel like it's not going to work anymore. Like, we can't watch another Iron Man movie that's just Iron Man. Like, that just doesn't work anymore. And it sounds like they're well on their way. Uh, Spider-Man is going to have Iron Man in it. And Ant-Man and Wasp is going to have uh, Hawkeye in it. And I just think that's that's how it's going to be from now on. Like, unless we're introducing a character for the first time, there's we're going to have multiple Avengers in a movie. And to me, that's the first step to, like, finally making this movie universe feel like one. And again, uh, Hulk is in Thor. That was another one I forgot. So there's perfect examples right there of how they're just going to start putting all these other characters in the movies. And I think that's the future of the Marvel franchise. Um, my number two is Guardians of the Galaxy. It's, it's so good. Like... Obviously, everybody loves this movie. You know, you got Groot, you got Chris Pratt as Star-Lord. The music, I mean, what can I possibly say about this movie that everybody doesn't already know? To me, it was brilliant. You're taking a property that nobody really knows or cares about, and then you just turn it into the funniest thing that anyone's ever seen, and that makes everyone care, and you give, you give us the most charismatic people on screen, and you take an actor like Batista, Dave Batista, who, you know, we know him as a wrestler and nobody had really known him for acting. He had done some kind of shit movies, but turned him into a huge international star. I mean, he had this and James Bond like in the same year and or at least pretty close. I think it might have been the year after when Spectre came out and he was great in both. And now he's going to be in Guardians 2. And it's 
it was just such an amazing movie. The way it all just came together so perfectly. It looks incredible. It's so colorful. And yeah, it's like a big CG fest, but it's a big space movie. What do you expect, you know? Um, and yeah, Chris Pratt is just so fucking likable as Star-Lord. Everyone is just nailing it. And, you know, the again, a weak villain from the Marvel end. But he's, he's not as weak as some of the others. And it's... Uh, what's his name? Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon kind of steals the show in a couple scenes, in my opinion. It's just so fucking good and so entertaining. If you don't like Guardians of the Galaxy, I don't know what is wrong with you. And my number one Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, which I think at this point you probably figure it out, is Captain America The Winter Soldier. Um, this movie fucking blew me away. Um, Again, I liked the Captain America movie when it came out. Didn't love it. Um, but Winter Soldier just pushed that character to another level with me. And it that's the one that made me go back to the comics. And I read the Civil War comics. And that is fantastic if you haven't read the Ed Brubaker run of Captain America where they introduced the Winter Soldier. It's one of my favorite books. But Winter Soldier was so entertaining they do a good job of making the winter soldier feel like a fucking terminator and he feels scary when he's on screen and that really helps with the music they have the theme for him and he's just the sound effects and the design and some of the best fucking fight choreography in the franchise like you watch the scene where they're having the knife fight in the middle of the street and the way they're fucking flipping it around and catching it and stuff i'm sure a lot of it's cg but it's so good and so fucking intense like, the action scenes in that movie are awesome. And the Russo brothers, they're easily, like, the best directors to handle a Marvel movie. Because they did Winter Soldier, Civil War, and now they're doing the next Avengers movies. And these are guys that started out in TV. Like, these are guys that directed episodes of Arrested Development. And they're so great. And I can't wait to see what they bring to an Avengers movie. I mean, I guess we kind of already did with Civil War. And that was awesome. So, I mean, them handling Infinity War, I'm super excited uh so yeah my first one is winter soldier it's a it's a great movie it's still one of my favorites i it'll be hard pressed for me to find one that beats it in the upcoming future um i mean i hear guardians 2 isn't as good as guardians 1 but still a really great movie so we'll see how that goes but i mean looking at the movies coming out like i can't see anything beating winter soldier for me so those are my top 10 marvel movies um and i will give a shout out and honestly this is probably my real number 10 um, to the Incredible Hulk. Uh, I really love that Incredible Hulk movie. I know it wasn't as successful as some of the other ones, and it's kind of the forgotten child of the Marvel franchise. But I would love to see what this franchise would look like if Ed Norton was still playing the Hulk. Because honestly, I wasn't completely sold on... Uh, what's his name? Uh, fuck, who's the Hulk now? Um, totally blanking on his name. Uh, I wasn't sold on Ruffalo, Mark Ruffalo. I wasn't sold on Ruffalo in the first Avengers movie. Uh, it definitely came around by the time of Age of Ultron. Just the the banter and dialogue and stuff with him and Tony Stark and Age of Ultron was really what sold me on him. But I would still have loved to have seen what this franchise would have been like with Ed Norton still in it. Uh, I know he's an asshole to work with, but he is one of my favorite actors. And I love that Hulk movie. I think it's really great, really entertaining. And again, feels pretty different. Like those early Marvel movies, they didn't feel as connected as they do now. They didn't have all the same look or anything, the same directorial style. So I I, I think that one is honestly probably my real number 10. Uh, I don't know what anybody else thinks about that movie, but I love it. Uh, I kind of forgot about that one when I was making my list. So those are my top 10 Marvel movies. Again, we'll recap from the bottom. And I guess I'll just tie Ant-Man and Hulk. So my number 10, Ant-Man and Hulk. Number 9, Captain America the First Avenger. Number 8, The Avengers. Number 7, Age of Ultron. Number 6, Iron Man 3. Number 5, Iron Man. Number 4, Doctor Strange. Number 3, Civil War. Number 2, Guardians of the Galaxy. And number 1, Captain America the Winter Soldier. Um, I would love to hear what anybody else's uh, top tens are or opinions are on the Marvel movies. So you can send them in. If you email them to shelledfilmpodcast at gmail.com 
or send them to me on Twitter even at Shelf Podcast. Uh, I will gladly talk about your list on the show and we can, you know, bounce it back and forth, see how it compares to mine. I, I have a feeling mine's probably pretty different from a lot of people's, but uh, I, w- I would love to hear that kind of stuff. I want to hear the responses. Uh, and don't forget, we're also on Instagram now at Shelf Podcast, so you can find us there. And don't forget to rate and review the show on iTunes. That helps us out a lot. Like, if you really want to help the show, that's the best way to do it because that's what pushes it up the charts. That's what, um, you know, gets the podcast in front of people so we can have more listeners and really have a lot of fun doing this, get some more interactions with people. Um, But yeah, don't forget to review the show. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Don't forget, this Friday, we were talking about Alien vs. Predator, The Hunt. I am well into the script at this point, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, And I know what the scripts are for the next couple weeks, and I think it's going to be really exciting. So I hope everybody's ready for those. But uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. And be sure to come back Friday for Alien vs. Predator.